Hi everybody, my name is Gudrun from G Designs. Welcome to our part three of the Hey June Quiltalon. Hi everybody, I hope you're doing well. Maybe you took a lunch break if you're in the time zones that we are in. We had a little bit of a snack, so we are uh, kind of energized, rejuvenated. We're ready for it. It wasn't three. another stack and wax sandwich. Oh, you it was... show me stack and wax. Yeah. You show me stack and wax. <laughs> All right, we have the photo of the elusive stack and wax. Let me just say, this was not styled or anything. This is a real life sandwich. Look at that. So. Ooh. How do you make this? Stack and wax. We, I either use like the bagel thins, which is this. They have a hole in it. The better ones are the sandwich thins that don't have a hole just because of uh, um, messiness. And then I easily either do, I do um, plant-based lunch meat, usually like a smoked, kind of like a smoked turkey. You can, of course, use real meat. Um, I put some chow cheese, vegan cheese. And then tomatoes, avocados, a little bit of spinach, you can't see it. Um, and then either a fried egg or um, just egg. We're out of just egg, so I did real eggs. But then the key thing, the key things are, of course, the bun has to be toasted, right? Yes. Key. Toasted. Key element. Key. And then uh, you put red pepper jelly Ooh. on the bread. And then there's a little bit of a sauce that goes uh, on the sandwiches, too. We're all about the sauces. Secret sauce. It is kind of like a sriracha mayo type, or like a sriracha ranch, I would say, that's on there. And it is so, so satisfying. Mm. So, so good. Yo, it's a little bit wax. messy. It is a stack and whack. It's a good sandwich <laughs> when it's messy. It is. That, that's the key. It needs to be messy. So you can try it out. You can add and do whatever. It's nothing, <laughs> nothing extraordinary about how this sandwich comes together, but it is extraordinarily good. Yeah. Okay. It kept us alive throughout the five days of retreat. We had one in the morning, and it lasted us pretty much all day with a little bit of snagging. It is delicious. All right, let's check out some of you guys' progress. I've been kind of checking in on you, uh, your postings on Goodner's Cool Crew, so I just snatched a few photos. Let's see. Him. Oh, first, I wanted to show you this one. Uh, Susie's husband was checking in on us. <laughs> that was funny. He's not sewing, but he's checking in, seeing what's going on. <laughs> um, and then we have a group of quilters. Candace has a group of quilters, some of them in person, and others are actually, uh, I think, virtually with them as well, connected through Zoom or something, or FaceTime. Um, and then we have Kathy's blocks. Beautiful. Love that. That's uh, Violet Hill fabric bundle. Oh, I love that green that he chose with it for the background. And then we have Ella Lou's blocks. She's using Dwell. Dwell in Possibility. Beautiful. I love this fabric, so I knew I was going to love this quilt. Uh, Julie's blocks are also on the way. This is the pearl fabric. Oh, love this. Uh, that's going to be awesome. And we have Laura's blocks, red, white, and blue. That's going to be so classic and beautiful. We have Leslie's. She's working with Abandoned, the first Abandoned. I love that maroon. Is that maroon? Yeah, it's kind of a um, violet. No. Yeah, not really a maroon. It's more violet. And then we have maroon. Linda's. Maroon, violet. Kind of the also same. Abandoned. I think that's the first abandoned as well. Maybe it's a mix of both. Abandoned one and two. Um, is maroon your favorite color? Is that what you're saying? I, I like that combination with the gray. Oh, yeah. It was great. Not my favorite color. No. But you were a golden gopher, though. I was a golden gopher. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right. Um, next one up. Oh, I love these. This is Marlis's blocks. These are going to be, oh, can't wait to see this. So colorful and fun. And then we have Patricia's, more neutrals, uh, with a touch of blue. Gotta love that. I love that background. That's cool. And then we have Cottage Blue. This is Robin's blocks. Oh, love this. This is going to be another gorgeous one. And one more. 
I think Suzanne's. This is Suzanne's. So pretty. Love it. So it looks like blues, greens, and yellows or gold. That's going to be awesome. So keep it up. Keep the photos coming. I love seeing the progress. And I can't even imagine the thousands of June quilts that are going to be born starting today. I'm not going to say born today, but starting today. They're starting their uh, pregnancy today, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> they have to go through all the layers of maternity. Um, anyways, beautiful job. So thank you, thank you. We have some winners from our part two session. So let's check out our winners. Uh, they are Laura Maki and Susan Tibbetts. Yay! You get a prize from us, so we'll be in touch or send us a quick email to help at GQL Designs, and we'll get it out to you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so we have a little something special. Some people are asking where they find the mix, the music. Oh, the Spotify playlist. So there's an app, a music app called Spotify. You can also just go on Spotify.com in a browser on a computer. And um, you can, you don't have to pay for it to be a member or anything. You can get a free, sign, get a free account. And then you can play any song anytime. And you can create playlists. So we created a, a Spotify play, or he did. Mr. Honey Producer created a Spotify playlist called Hey June QAL 2021. So it is linked on our blog. If you go to our blog, the playlist is there. You can just click on it. It takes you to Spotify. Um, and if you uh, have a smartphone, it's really great to download that app on your phone. You can listen to whatever music and all kinds of stuff. So you can listen to our, um, our Sew Along playlist. We've made one for every single Sew Along. So we have four out there. So check it out. And um, QAL 2021 is the name of it. So it's on, yeah, check out the blog. That's where you find all the extra stuff. So I do recommend if you're listening to the playlist, do it on shuffle because all the songs that I added are at the, at the end. So, but hitting the shuffle, sometimes you know, get a lot of artist songs in a row, but that way it kind of goes, goes all over and you get a lot of variety of music. So good idea. play it on shuffle, right? So I'm loving seeing your post about how you're loving the playlist. And I think a lot of people have been listening to this playlist all year. 20 Whether hours, they're working 18, out, 18, 19 hours of cleaning. Music. Yeah, yeah. It's great. All right. So um, instead of having a special guest for this segment, part three, uh, we thought it is kind of, we're halfway. And so we thought it's kind of a perfect time to get up and stretch and move a little bit. So actually we have a little something special that we wanted to do. So I'm gonna lead you through a few little movements, but uh, we have a special appearance. So I'm gonna exit and, um, no, I'm just, I gotta grab something, so. Otherwise you're gonna come in and do this, okay? So uh, maybe a good time to get out of your chair and, Get a little space, you don't need a lot of space. Just a little bit of space around you. And like stretch your arms out, make sure you can, you don't hit anything. It's underneath there. Okay. Be kind, be kind. All right. Oh, look at that, we're gonna have live music, live music. So I'm going to just lead you through a few little movements. So first, just kind of loosen up. We're going to start with the kind of neck up. So just very slowly, head down. Oh, chin to your chest. Feel those muscles stretch in the back. And in this position, look to your right. Very slowly, pushing the boundaries a little bit back down and the other side and back down head up and lean your head towards your right shoulder and over great I'm 
gonna do big shoulder rolls. Oh, Kobe's here too. Stretch, Kobe. Roll and back. So go forward and then roll up and back. And then we're gonna switch position. Go back, up, forward. Back. Do we need to be on the beat? Shake them out. So now we're gonna lift up and down. Up. Does this qualify as a silver sneaker workout? <laughs> We're going to change it into a little bit of roll. So now we're starting to dance a little bit. Yeah. Start twisting your torso. And now give it a little bounce with the knees. Okay, we're going to raise our arms up. Deep breath. Down, yeah, good idea. Breathe in deep, in through your nose, and out. Up. We're gonna end up with the arms up, stay here. We're gonna stretch up and up. You can't see me. Up <laughs> and up. You feel free to sing. No, people. Oh, good. Come up with their own lyrics. Okay. Arms or hands on your shoulders. We're going to twist. So try and keep your hips stable and just twist your torso. Use those muscles in your core to move your body and stay stable in the knees and hips. Nice. We're gonna hold this position, arm out, pull it over, stretching the shoulder a little bit. Feel free to, nice. We're gonna switch. Hi, Kobe. Nice. We're gonna bring our arms back, either grab your hands or if you can grab your forearms and then bring your shoulders back and down and look breathe, up breathe. open up your chest and breathe okay now we're gonna bounce a little bit bounce those knees a little bit so we're gonna kind of bend our knees just a little bit I'm going to go on the side. You can see my mic pack there, but um, keep your back straight, a little bit arched, so a normal arch. And we're going to go down slow, bend forward until you feel a little stretch, and then we're going to round up our back and roll it back up. Do it again. Down, two, three, four, and then we round up. Two, three, four down two three four and up all right freestyle 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 Your salsa Great job, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I had to Congress. All right. Oh, Can I have my chair back? Thank you. Nice job. We're ready for All right. This now. was We're a ready. spontaneous decision that happened not too long ago. So I hope you enjoyed that, shaking it up a little bit. Um, maybe we just looked ridiculous. Who knows? But I, I hope you enjoyed it. So we are going to move on to our next steps. So. Hopefully your blocks are looking cool, looking good, and you have a few done so we can try moving on with a few units. So we're going to be working through the next steps. Um, so we have, and now I'm going to show you my other quilt that's in progress. So I have this other set of fabrics. 
So I have my A fabrics, the red is my B, and the purplish gray is my background. So now we're gonna pair these up. So what you wanna do is take an A center and a B center, I'm gonna pair them up, and I like to have the A, let me move this out of the way. I like to have the A on the bottom. Now here is very important to listen because it's easy to make a mistake here. We wanna lay the A block on point on your cutting mat, right side up. The A block is the one where the seams are pressed out. And just know that the background are gonna be on the sides. On the sides. So then we're gonna take the B block and we're gonna lay it right sides together so that the backgrounds are touching on each side and then we have the B fabric and the A fabric touching on the top and bottom. So if you pressed according to the directions, all these seams should nest together. You just take a little time to feel them, feel them all nesting everywhere together. And then we're gonna place our any long ruler. I'm gonna use my XL. I'm placing that, uh, kind of using just the outer edge of it, corner to corner here. And then we're gonna cut them apart. So what you wanna do, we are gonna cut them apart and then sew on that cut line, which obviously is gonna be a bias. So if you want to, you can pin this piece just to hold it together, because they're kind of bigger pieces. Just make sure you put your pins nowhere close to the edge so that you don't rotary cut through them. So I like to put maybe three pins in here. And like this. And so that I, I'm sure that I'm not gonna cut through them. Um, I wanted to come up with something cool to remember to put the backgrounds together. So that's a BT. So instead of the BGs, we're gonna call it the BTs. Remember okay. BTs? I'm sure, are there any BGs on the playlist? I'm sure. Yeah. All right, so now we're ready to cut it apart. So be super careful and just hold your cutter up against the ruler. Like so. So now these are already pinned together. The ruler is holding the other sandwich um, together. So now I can just move it over and pin it before I pick it up. So then it's ready to go straight to my sewing machine and be sewn together. I wanted to show you this one thing though before um, we sew them together. So you will notice that there's a bit of a thickness here where you cut the seams apart. So there is a little piece in there that you can remove. So if you check um, this seam here, check in here, I'm just gonna use my tweezers so it's easier for you to see, but you can pull out these little triangles you see this? Just a little triangle that you can pull out here. Um, and another one on the other side here. And then there's one on the, so there's two on one side and then there's one on the other side that I can pull out like that. So you can pull these out that will lessen that bulk. Okay. And if it doesn't pull out easily, I like to have my little scissors so I can actually just cut it. So there's a second one in here that sometimes is a little bit attached, but you can just trim that. So see how it's kind of attached? So I can just snip it. And this way, this is very nice and thin where you're gonna sew these together. So we're gonna sew them together right on the edges so they're ready to go straight to the sewing machine. And once they're sewn together, we have one here. So you wanna press them, and so we have a piece that's a fabric A and a fabric B. So we're gonna go by the fabric that's in the middle. So this is my B, my darks. I'm gonna to press towards the darks. So when you are pressing, I'm just gonna demonstrate this. My iron is cold, it's not hot, it's not on, but I just wanna show you how I iron. So, oh, is, there, is it working? Okay, let me see if we can get the up close camera. Um, let me see. Okay, there it is. Okay. 
So once we lay it down, I lay my block down. I'm trying to do it so I can see it. There we go. And first, I always press over the seam. So set the seam. And then because it is a bias edge, you want to make sure you fold your fabric out first. Push with your fingers and then push with your fingers and only follow straight on with the iron. Use your fingers to push it out and then follow with the iron. And that's what that's the best way to not get much of a stretch. If you get a little bit of a stretch, don't worry, we're going to trim all these blocks up. But that is what we're going to do. Here's our blocks. So here you will get two out of this same sandwich, two identical ones. So here are two of my blocks. And the next step is just to cut them apart. Now I wanted to show you, because you were probably wondering about my option. Press towards the dark side. If the B is in the middle, the, you're going by the fabric in the middle. Press towards the darker triangle. So the B fabrics. So I wanted to show you these. So what if you're doing being a rebel like me and using multiple different backgrounds? So it really doesn't matter which ones you put together as long as you just follow the rule. The BTs, not the BGs, the backgrounds together, even though there's they're um, two different colors. It doesn't matter because we always want to cut through the corners that are not background. You don't want to cut through the background. Do not cut through the background. Okay. So this block will actually end up being like this. So you always have the dark light on the corners and then the background. Okay. So this will be fun to see how this turns out. Why do you set the seams? Um, setting the seams, what that does, it really um, flattens out your thread. And you know, you probably notice sometimes, depends on your machine, but sometimes they just um, crinkle your seams a little bit. It's not laying flat. So by ironing, setting the seams first, you get the fabric really nice and straight. And then uh, in particular, flatten those threads because then your, your fabric folds over easier. and You can get a much nicer, flatter seam. Should we use some best press on the diagonal pieces? I do not recommend spraying anything on your blocks after you've started piecing. If you wanted to use best press, you should have treated all your fabrics with that before you even started. So, but it's not, I wouldn't worry about it. I didn't use that for any of my quilts because we're going to be trimming it up. So let's get to that part. Uh, we're going to be trimming the blocks to 12 and a half inches. So with um, with that, there was a question. Let me answer that question because I get asked that all the time. I do this a lot in my patterns where I cut pieces apart and I sew on the um, sew on the cut line or cut edge and then press and then I trim. So can I draw a line, sew on each side, and cut them apart afterwards? Of course you can. But let me tell you why I don't. We're going to be trimming these pieces up. We're going to be squaring up our blocks. We're going to end up with perfectly square blocks. So for me, I like to save me that time of drawing, stitching on each side, cutting them apart and pressing. I can just cut them apart. I don't have to worry about my seam being accurate. And then I press and I trim it up. I do this with half square triangles. So my half square triangles are going to be perfect because they're going to be trimmed up anyway. So you can do that. If you feel more comfortable doing that, go for it. But personally, I like to save that 20 minutes or something. Do you randomly put them together? Or are you matching? No, I'm actually not matching. I want to put, um, let me just show you these two I put together. So what I want to do is put, so that this is where it's helpful to have variety. I want to put something that's a different print, kind of different print everywhere. So if you can, so break it up, mix it up because your blocks are going to end up like this. So you want variety in each block. So think about that. Um, that is not too matchy matchy. Oh yeah, I got that question. All right. So let's square up. So I'm going to start with the Excel ruler, which is going to be the same instruction as for the, um, for the squared ruler. So for the Excel, you want to turn it around and use the white 
square up feature here on this side. So bringing the block down, we're going to be using the 12 and a half inch. So that is the biggest white square. So I have put blue arrows on the four corners of that square. So then what you want to do is kind of center that square on your block. You're going to be trimming about a quarter inch or so off on each side, but we're not going to even think about what gets trimmed off on each side because it's different from each side. We're going to be looking at that white dotted diagonal line, lining it up on that seam, on the diagonal seam. Now it's more important that it's lined up on the edges than it is in the middle because in the middle, nobody's really going to see that. This is more important on the two corners. So then you just want to look and see there's another diagonal line going this way. So you can kind of match that on the corners here. But my trick, if you're using the stripology ruler, same thing with the square ruler is what is important uh, when we, what is going to be helpful when we start sewing these blocks together is I have put two arrows here on the center line. Now this is not listed in the pattern and the pattern I just described it, center your 12 and a half inch square on your block, lining up the diagonal line, but this is the little extra bonus you get in class. So look at this center line here and look how far it is from this seam. This should not, the seam should not be on the line. However, we want the seam to be equal distance from the line here as it is here. So how do I do that by moving? So it's a shorter distance here than it is here. So I know I want to lessen this, which means I got to move the ruler actually this way because I want to have it stay on the seam, the line stay on the seam. So I just slide it just slightly down, ever so slightly. And now look, it seems like it's the same distance and it's just approximate. Don't even worry about it being too accurate. So now I'm happy with how it looks. Diagonal line is still on the seam, equal distance over here. So I'm ready to make my cuts. I'm cutting through the 12 and a half. I've put arrows there too, arrow stickers. And on the zero on here. So these on the XL, it's actually marked 12 and a half, but I just put arrow stickers on it. Folks love the stickers. So then we just remove our little slivers. So as you can see, it's not exactly the same amount cut from each side. We're going to turn our block and now we're going to repeat it. So we have a diagonal line here on the seam. But now since this edge and this edge is already trimmed, I can line up this horizontal line on the edge of the block. So I line up my diagonal, that's important. But again, now I'm going to check these. And there's a little bit more over here, so I want to slide it just a titch this way. And let me tell you, if you, you will notice this, that on one side, the gap is going to be smaller than on the other sides that you did. And there's a reason for that. It's all geometry. <laughs> it's because we only cut this diagonally one way and not the other way. So there's, they're going to be off less on the, on one side, just, just so you know. Okay. So now it's equal on both sides. This is on the diagonal on the seam. So now I can cut again and we have a perfectly squared up block. All right. So trimming it to 12 and a half, the same, it's really the exact same thing with the squared ruler. We are using the white largest um, lines, outlines. We have the white diagonal lines. Do not use the black, use the white. And then we have that thick center line here, which we can use to determine where, um, we have the placement from the seam here. Okay, so not really much adjustment by using this ruler versus the XL. If you have no, uh, neither ruler and wanna use regular rulers, I actually, you can use, if you have a 12 and a half inch square ruler, that's easy. You just center that on your block and they usually have a diagonal line going right through the center of it. So you line that on the seam and you should have no problem. So half of 12 and a half inch ruler, there should be a six and a quarter inch line. That's your center. That's the center that I was talking about with these guys where I put the arrows in the middle. So you can use that. If you have this arrow stickers, put that on. 
You could also use your cutting mat. You can use the stickers and mark out a line on your cutting mat to square this up and then just use a ruler lining up with the lines on the cutting mat. I don't always recommend that because some cutting mats are not very accurate. The measurements aren't accurate. However, if you do that all the time for all of your blocks, all of your blocks will be the same. Did you make those so, stickers? Yes. I designed them, created them, and we manufacture them here, right here in the USA. Awesome. Yes, we have our staff package them even. So, and we do too sometimes too. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, it's other all GE, GEZ. All right, now we're ready for some questions. So, what I'd like you to do is finish some blocks. Um, Go through all the steps of, of cutting them apart, sewing them together, squaring up so you go through all those steps and um, we can kind of answer all your questions from that. If I have the same fabric in inside and outside, so just take it apart. No, 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 no. No, don't worry about that. Don't take it apart. I will have that in some of mine. You know, it's the same fabric, just a different color. Like this will be, I have the same fabric. Can you, can you see this in the overhead? Now we can. So here there will be um, the same fabric here and here and here and here. So it's just going to happen this way. But obviously when you have more variety, if you're making a bigger quilt with more different fabrics, that's going to be easier to mix up. But when you're making smaller quilts, it's harder. Are you the creator of the stripology ruler? Yes, I am. Are you asking this question? Did somebody ask that? I'm just saying. Okay, yes. I am the designer of the stripology ruler. Yes, it's somebody else. Okay, okay. Now, do you guys know how old it is? Next year, the original Stribology ruler will be 10 years old. I oh. believe. No, 2012. 20. No, was it 2014? It was 2014. Oh, it's eight. Oh, man, that would have been so much fun. All right. Um, no more questions on this? Oh, what fabric pack did you use with the red? So all of the light fabrics are from the Pamper bundle, and then the red is, um, so I'm using the single red in all the blocks. So the, my darks are just a single fabric. So since I'm doing the crib size, I'm just using a yard, uh, I think it's a yard. No, wait, yeah, a yard of, you just need a yard of uh, one fabric for the darks. And then I use, I'm using four different fabrics for these, three or four. It's actually scraps. I wasn't able to get everything. And, um, oh, please show removing the triangles. Yes, I was going to do that in the close-up. Let's do that in the close-up. I think I have one that I haven't removed it. Oh, it's off again? Okay. That camera has just given us got some bug in it. So I'm going to just go right up to... Um, the overhead camera here. So you'll see these triangles in here. If you open up the seam, you'll see this like little loose triangles just sitting there. So you can just pull it out either with your fingers or if you have a tweezer. On the other side, you can check inside the seam. Yes, there's another little triangle sitting there. You can get that out. And then go on the other side. On this side, there will be None on one side, so there's no on this side, but there's two on this side. So here's one. Um, yep, got that out. The other one might have to be cut out, so I usually just pull it a little bit out and then use my scissors. Now, of course, this is something, this is a step you don't have to do. Oh, let's see. So I have it. It's peeking out now, pulled it out, so I can snip it. There. So you just go right into the, open this up, open the seam up, and just see if there's any little triangle sitting there that you can pull out. All right. Any other questions? I don't, they came with like, I got an embroidery. So if you do machine embroidery, these are really, really great. Uh, any kind of tweezer, you can use any kind of tweezers. Um, but these, I don't sell these. I should maybe, maybe I should. Uh, but they are really kind of a, a machine embroidery or if you do paper piecing to pull out the little papers. I don't do paper piecing, but, <laughs> but maybe some of you do. 
Where do the little triangles come from? So if you um, press according to directions, you you know, some seams are going in and some are out. So it's when they are intersecting and you cut them apart. It's just the layers. And so when they're loose in there, I just get rid of them because they don't need to be there because it just makes your seams thicker. How do you find six and a quarter on a stripology ruler? You don't need to find it on a stripology ruler. On a stripology ruler, there is um, a center line, which is six and a half inches or six and a quarter from so that's the center on all of your markings so the stripology ruler um does not have it but quarter inch markings the little notches between the slits that's a quarter inch marking if you need to do a any kind of quarter my first block cut on the background instead how noticeable will it be well um it is going to be noticeable because all the background pieces come together they form you know, you see the big pluses, the big white pluses. So that's the background pieces coming together. So um, it is probably going to be noticeable. You might be able to maybe put this block in the corner or something. I would just kind of set it aside and see. But it's going to look very different from your other ones for sure. Is it okay to match the triangle to different triangles instead of both to the same patterns and colors? Oh after you cut them apart and then match them? Yes, you can, you can, um, absolutely. But I, I think it's not, they're not gonna be identical because they're actually gonna be mirrors. So let me show you. So these two were cut apart and sewn together and you'll see with the red on the right, the shoes are on this side, the scene is on that side and then opposite here. So. So if you have multiple colors for these, that this will all be different too. So it's, I don't think that's something. It's just really nice to layer them, nest all the seams, and then pin them so you can just go straight to the sewing machine. It's so fast. Uh, please talk about the Hey June labels. So the labels, um, we've offered this for the past three sew alongs. Um, so I designed a little label and that I'm having printed on fabric. And so it's just, you can purchase this as $2.50. We have a pre-order for it now. I just wanted to get an idea of how many I need to print. I don't, because sometimes they run out. Um, so we will put this order in next week and we will ship them out to you. Hopefully it won't take more than two to three weeks to get them. And I pu always put a quote um, on all of those. And I chose for this quilt along since we're coming out of quarantine and what I have learned and I've known for a long time, if I'm feeling down, I lift myself up by lifting up others. So being generous and sharing and caring. And that makes you feel good. So, all a, right. How about a stack and wax sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> you hungry already? All right. So that was long one, 45 minutes. So we, I'm going to break now and give you some time to work on your blocks. We're going to come back with um, session four and uh, part four and then we'll show you some layouts um we're gonna have special guests and see you in a little bit bye everybody mm -hmm.